I appreciate you guys watching. Do me a favor and hit that like button real quick. It's a thumbs up. That's the only way I can really tell if you guys really like these types of videos. If I get a lot of thumbs up, then I know you like this style video and I'll pop out a bunch more. If you hadn't subscribed, I sure would appreciate it if you would. And hit that little bell that says notifications. And this way you'll get an email whenever I put out a new video. So I'm going to be doing a lot of these. Going through all the rigging, how we rig every bait. And I'm doing my chart videos as well. So you can see how we attack each lake while we go over the chart. Hey guys, I wanted to take a minute and, and talk to you about how I rig Big Gizzard Shad. Uh, we're fishing with Big Gizzard Shad right now. I just did a video on Smith Mountain Lake with my buddy Dave Farley. You may have seen it. And I had a lot of comments and questions asking about how exactly we rig our baits. So uh, this is a common way here. It's a J-hook with a stinger hook, with a stinger treble hook. It's been around forever. It's just a great way to get you know, a lot of good hookups on even medium sized fish when they're taking baits that are too big for them. This is a nine inch bait here, but you know a nine inch gizzard gets very, very wide in the middle. So it can be a little tricky for a smaller fish to get it down their mouth quick. So a stinger hook is really, really helpful. Stinger hooks are great because you can pull the baits quicker instead of going, you know, like two tenths of a mile or three tenths of a mile just creeping. You can crank the motor up to one and a half, even faster, even two miles an hour and just really pull them along. Because when the fish comes up, I mean, you know, they're, they don't have to turn the fish, turn the bait to get it down. They're going to grab it and they're going to get hit here or hit here. So uh, stinger hook is a great, great tool to have in your arsenal. This is just a basic design. You've seen this one everywhere. It's a big one here in the south. And it's just a J hook with a piece of leader attached here. And it's, it's tied right to the bend in the hook. You can use a Palomar knot or a trilene knot or something that's good for fluorocarbon. And then you have your tiny treble hook. I'm not sure what size this is, but uh, it's small. You don't want to go very big with these, you know. And when you're fighting your fish, be delicate with them because a lot of times the only thing that's holding them on is this treble hook. And these are thin wire. They can bend, they can pull out. So uh, if you're if you're near timber or in river system or something like that, you might want to go like 4X hooks that are very, very strong. They're still small, but they're a lot thicker. So you can see that's the, uh, the typical way right there. Go ahead and tie it to the shank. And what I like about that is there's a whole lot less line. So you can see when the bait is hooked and your trailer is back here, your stinger is back here. You see how the line lays nice across the body of the fish. So I kind of like that being tied in the arch. Since I was a kid, I always did it like this with a, a snell. Probably one of the only times you'll see me use a snell really. But you see how the snell, the tail comes down nice parallel against the hook. It lays nice and neat. So when you hook your bait, the line lays nice and neat against the hook. But I still like this version a little better. It's just a little less line. And when you hook your, your bait, you can see how that line is right snug up against the bait to your stinger. So it kind of hides it nice, hides it a little better this way. So that's, that's the way I like it. That's how Dave Farley likes them. That's how we were doing them in the video at his place over there. Nice. Everything I got's running. You all right? You're shivering so darn much. <laughs> how he gently squeezes the fish. I won't put fishing up the top. All right, Mr. Farrell, show me how we're going to hook it. Go right here, under the boat, All right. butt tops, right in the angle fin, right there. Right. Get that scale on. Now, these other two were a little different. I honestly haven't seen them anywhere before. I don't know, maybe if, if you guys saw it, you could say in the comments. But this is something I kind of designed years ago where I didn't want to hook into the bait at all. And it's just a piece of shrink tubing here. And it stiffens up the wire right here where you can have it aiming up, down. You see, you can bend it and have it up high, low, whatever you want. And the idea is when you hook the fish, your bait, the stinger here, if you look from the top view, is kind of riding next to the to the bait. It's not hindering it at all. And it's not like a piece of garbage or something stuck to the bait fish that might turn a striped bass off. Common to popular belief, man, striped bass are extremely finicky. Extremely finicky. It's crazy how finicky they can be. So just something like that, just getting the hook off the bait sometimes can be the difference right there. Now, if the fish is out there for a while, sometimes the bait will eventually kind of snag on it. And it's not the end of the world if he does. Uh, you know, so don't worry about that. But this is just a piece of 50-pound 
wire. It's a little too thick for what I would use for gizzard shad. You can see it's kind of high vis. It kind of sticks out. You can use 25 pounds. I just didn't have any of that lighter wire to show you. So it's just a regular little crimp on there and the wires crimp through the eye of the hook. I've even done it with two. I have two wires coming off and I bend them out. So you have two coming out and they're just riding right below the belly of that bait fish, you know. Just have one on each side, just riding right below the belly. You know, a lot of the times, if the baits are small, like in the seven or eight inch range, we were using some eight and nine inch baits in the video that I'll put some clips on to show you. But if you got like five and six inch, seven inch baits, I like to let the trailer hang. You know, I won't even stick it into the fish sometimes. If I keep missing fish, I'll go ahead and change that, of course. I'll put it in the anal fin or the dorsal. But if it's a smaller bait, I'll let it hang. And uh, it's kind of the same idea of this. It, it just keeps the line stiffer, so in case they're just hanging straight down, it's just sticking back a little better. So in the video, some of the fish that we caught, the baits, the stinger hooks were just hanging. On the bigger baits, we hooked them in the anal fin or the dorsal fin. Thank you, brother. Now this is another one. It's a <laughs> this little trick here is a good one. This one will win a tournament here. Uh, I have never showed this one before, and it goes with the idea of you know when a fish will not hit a bait with a big honking scary hook in its face, it just won't hit it. We'll just delete it. You know, a lot of the times the fish just hits the the stinger anyway. So I have a clip here. And I've used swivels in the past. You can put a swivel on this and you just swivel, you just clip this to the lip, inside lip of the gizzard shad. And then you can go ahead and put your stinger in his back here if you want, or you can put it in the anal fin down here. And the only thing that's on that fish to deter a bite is that stinger treble hook because you have that clip here instead of a hook. You know, like I said, most of the time they hit the stinger anyway, but you know, this is only when the fish are extremely, extremely finicky. Maybe crystal clear water. Maybe they're smaller fish. Maybe you netted a bunch of bait that's just bigger than what you like. This is a good tip right here because a lot of the smaller fish just get nipped the tail anyway. It's all give and take here. You know, you're giving, you're getting some stuff and losing some other. Lastly, this is a clip I use a lot in salt water. Uh, man, I, I, I haven't seen this since I was a kid, really. Anyone else use it? I made this one here with some wire. You can make them with draw ties i'm not taking credit for inventing this i did not invent this i saw this somewhere but what you do with this is you take your your clip here open her up and then you'll in your bait you'll pop a hole in the roof of the mouth and i'll put a video here a clip of video in this video showing me hooking a big bait and then i'll take the clip and go back through the hole and then clip this shut see two nostrils about the width of the clip from the mouth is where you want to pop a hole but after you pop the first one, you pretty much know where they all go. So I'm going to pop the hole right here. Okay, we'll pop a hole and then pull it out. So we got one, two, three holes. And you can kind of see that's the width of the clip from the mouth to the hole, right? Now I'm going to take this clip and we go back to the hole I just made. And the clip pops out. Max, can't eat this one, buddy. All right, I'm going to activate the clip. And now we pull that bait we're drifting with it you can see the clip and now you're pulling by the clip through the jaw of the mouth and it just keeps that hook high and dry it's in a spot where it won't get hung up it won't have you know slide sometimes you've all seen this where the bait slides up and then gets rehooked again and then you're pulling a bait like this kind of sideways and it's you know, fish hits it and he's never going to hook himself so this really ensures that the hook stays nice and high and because it's so uh in such a position where it can really attack i hook more fish with just this if i'm not using a stinger hook versus you know a hook in the nose or a hook in the mouth where the hook is like this so if you're going without a stinger this one works really well and i would go smaller than this of course that that's this is like a nine aught you know, for even for the gizzard shad we had in the video, which are between seven and eight inches, maybe a couple nines, I would use a hook, you know, down to a five or a six, something like that. But I did it here with this is a twisty wire from a uh, twist tie from a grocery bag. You know, it comes in a you know for in the bread for twisting up the bread. Just rip the paper off and 
attached it with that. A little good idea there. I want to take a minute and thank Dave Farley for having us out on his water. I haven't been on Smith Mountain Lake in over 10 years, and it was a really good time out there, even though it was raining. And uh, I really do appreciate it, Dave. Thanks, brother. Right here, keep an eye on this one. Close one? That front, that, that front board just got a little... Uh, got this is right here on the inside. Got a little yeah. just... Sure did. Front board, backboard just got it. There we go! Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! Catch him, baby! Catch him! <laughs> we'll go back with this one. Oh, yeah, I, that's down. the one I was watching first. A pretty fish there, buddy. Yeah, brother. Just come up here and lift him. Come here and lift him. Pretty fish, Chucker. Now you can do it. He hit it. Woo, woo, woo! Come here, brother. Fish on, fish on. He's a screamer. He's a screamer. He's a screamer. Don't set the hook like I did. Thanks for watching, guys. I love you. Mean it. Stay safe on the water. Leave a few for me.